Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. I see the joins have uh, slowed to a trickle, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, hopefully, you're here because you are looking for the industry webinar about the Nevi slash Tevi awardee cybersecurity plan template. We can jump into our first slide here. Just a little bit of background before we jump into the template itself. My name is Jesse Lund. I'm with NASIO, the National Association for State Energy Officials. And in partnership with our friends at AASHTO, we have been supporting states with their NEVI deployment funds as they develop RFPs and their own programs for the National EV Infrastructure Program. Um, we've heard from states over the last year or so, some of the areas where they had more questions than others and have created topical working groups around the top four areas, one of which was on cybersecurity of EV charging infrastructure. I'm not gonna read this slide that's on your screen out loud. I know you're all capable of reading, but just to note the basic goal of this working group is to further support states as they look at best practices for cybersecurity risk management for EV charging infrastructure, particularly as it relates to the NEVI program. We've been working with this group for about the last six months or so. Um, they've developed recommendations, so we can actually go to the next slide here. Um, they've developed recommendations around some of these key questions that have come out of the meetings the last six months. So questions like, what should states be asking of their NEVI awardees to ensure that they're sufficiently planning for the protection of consumer data, as well as general cybersecurity risk around EV charging infrastructure? Um, some other questions around how states should then evaluate those submitted plans and what needs to happen if and when there is a cybersecurity incident. And today we're gonna to be talking specifically about one recommendation that addresses this first question. What should states be asking of NEVI awardees? And as we polled the states across the country about what they're currently asking awardees, resources they have in development, we learned that lucky for us, uh, Tennessee has already been working with HNTB as well as with the Joint Office of Energy and Transportation to develop an awardee cybersecurity plan template. And so if we go to the next slide, um, that this is really what we're gonna be talking about today. One of the recommendations that came out of the working group is that states across the country should consider utilizing this template developed in Tennessee, but applicable across the country when contracting with NEVI awardees. And of course, some states may need or want to supp supplement the template with state-specific language or requirements if necessary. Uh, though most of the feedback we've heard to date from states is that they are interested in using the Tennessee developed template more or less as is. And so as far as the most recent action here, the working group met in person for the first time at the EV Charging Infrastructure National Conference last month. Um, and this was the first time that the working group met with folks outside of state um, departments of transportation, energy, environment, et cetera. And so they presented their recommendations. There are about six total from the group, but including this first recommendation about the cybersecurity plan template. And during that working session, we heard loud and clear from industry that they were interested in an opportunity to provide feedback on the draft template before it is finalized and then adopted by other states. And so long way of saying that's exactly what we're here to do today. Um, we'll be hearing from the state of Tennessee, as well as from HNTB about the background of how and why this was developed. We'll go through the template itself, and then we'll go through instructions for how industry can provide feedback directly on the template before it's finalized. So more on that later. For now, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Alexa Wojtek with TDEC. Thank you, Jesse. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Alexa Wojtek. I'm the Deputy Director of Programs for the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation's Office of Energy Programs, which functions as the State Energy Office for Tennessee. 
And we are supporting TDOT in their implementation of the NEVI program in Tennessee, uh, working with them on the program design uh, and grantee um, implementation, project implementation. So just to kind of quickly provide a little more color and context beyond what Jesse just shared, um, as we were developing our program and thinking through how we wanted it to look within Tennessee, uh, when we were specifically uh, stepping through our TEVI, or what we call TEVI, Tennessee Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program, so that's NEVI, but at the Tennessee level, when we were developing our TEVI deployment plan that we had to, to submit to the Joint Office of Energy and Transportation, we built in some language specifically focused on cybersecurity and how we were planning to deal uh, with that topic in our grantee um, contracts and in the, the process of the project implementation itself. And so what we did was we were trying to think through both when we would solicit projects, how we would uh, award projects that were highly responsive to kind of key risks, r risks and concerns uh, tied to both physical and cybersecurity, and how we wanted to kind of prompt that through questions within our solicitation itself. And then how we wanted to then kind of on the back end, make sure that folks who were awarded had kind of a clearly de defined cyber approach uh, and what that could look like with regard to having a plan. And so we we said within our de heavy deployment plan that we would require all subrecipients um, once awarded that they would have to submit um, a cybersecurity plan to the state of Tennessee kind of before they could initiate their project. So. We, we outlined that we were, you can see here that we were cited by Baker Donaldson, a law firm as being one of the top states that kind of prioritized that cybersecurity piece within our, uh, within our deployment plan that was submitted to the Joint Office of Energy and Transportation. And then once that kind of was submitted and, and we were moving into the next piece of this, we realized that for subrecipients who didn't have already have a cybersecurity plan, we should likely develop a template for them so that they would know kind of what key topics uh, their cybersecurity plan should address. Um, and so I will now pass it to DG and she can kind of talk through some of these next pieces. Hi everyone, my name is DG Roberts. I am in the Air Quality and Alternative Fields Office with TDOT. And kind of like what Alexa was mentioning, um, we included the cybersecurity considerations in the notice of funding opportunity, as well as the scoring of an evaluation for the awarded um, sites. And TDOT designed and developed a TEVI grant award contract template also. And part of the reporting and plan requirements that we included the, in that was the um, cybersecurity plan submission. So that's kind of how um, we decided to go ahead and develop this along with HNTV. Next slide, please. And so we've been working with TDEC, HNTV, and um, a few of the people from PNNL and the joint office in order to coordinate this template. Um, the framework for the state cybersecurity requirements is kind of the basis of the template and uh, the program awardees to complete annually. And with that being said, I'll turn it over to Megan, who's gonna give you the good stuff. You're muted, Megan. Thanks, thanks, DG. This wouldn't be a webinar or a, a, a meeting without someone talking on mute, so thank you. Um, as, as DG mentioned, I'm Megan Stein, a uh, project manager at HNTV. And um, so here today to talk about this cybersecurity template that HNTB, TDEC, and TDOT uh, worked collaboratively to, to develop. So before we dive into the details of the template, I think it's important to understand, you know, kind of how we began to conceptualize the development of the document. So the TEBI team really built the foundation of this template on the cybersecurity procurement clauses provided by the joint office trying to remember exactly when those were issued, but um, the joint office worked with PNNL to develop those procurement clauses and then shared them with, with all the states. So this is kind of the foundation and what everything that we've developed is, is really built on. Uh, we took those foundational 
pillars that are outlined here on the screen. And we built those into questions that develop the framework of the document that we're going to be going through today. So what I've done here in this presentation is really kind of take snapshots of the um, of the template and then uh, put some talking points here here on the side to go through uh, with you all. So you're actually seeing the template. And then as, as Jesse mentioned, if you haven't seen the actual uh, template, we'll, we'll get that to you. But uh, just to be able to follow along with the visuals, I wanted to kind of keep it um, uh, documented here. So the first two pages of the template really provide the lay of the land here. So we have instructions for the completion of the form. Um, and a place for awardees to populate project-specific information. Uh, so awardees will add contact information and identify suppliers in this first section of the template. We're also asking awardees to formally certify the document and indicate whether this is their first time um, submitting the document or if they're providing an update to a previous submission. We do require this to be updated annually, so we want to be able to track that and indicate it on, on the first couple pages here. So you'll see we've also got a note here on the slide in red. One thing I'll highlight is that um, in working with the joint office and PNNL, the TEVI team gleaned the importance in, in understanding that while cybersecurity is crucial and critical with these EVSC projects, we also wanted to be mindful of the fact that the program is novel and the technology we're working with is kind of ever evolving. So that said, when we were um, developing this template, we wanted to build in that flexibility um, for the cybersecurity process implementation. So we tried to allow for that when, when it was possible. So you see that kind of in the introduction here of, of the template itself. So section one of the template is really getting to the root of the overall cybersecurity program structure for NEVI. So we're talking about the culture of cybersecurity, both for the awardee and the project partners associated with each of the projects. We're identifying risks, um, who the responsible party and point of contact is, um, and the associated mitigation strategy for those risks as well. Uh, we're covering the topic of um, incident response and discussing rapid response process and key contacts for that as well in this section. So one thing you'll notice with this template is that there's a gray shaded section under each of the questions. So these sections are meant to be guides and prompts for awardees to be able to understand the type of response we're hoping for in each question. As we were going through this process, we really identified a need to make sure we're helping to support the awardee that's filling out this template. So they're not just kind of like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what to put in the, into this section. Um, so we're really kind of giving them a framework of the type of response we're looking for and the type of information, kind of keywords that we're looking for them to include in their response for a particular section. So section two of this template covers um, identity, credential, and access management, or ICAM. And one thing you'll notice here is the first instance of this red asterisk that we have included on the template. Um, we've starred specific sections of this template where we're requiring awardees to currently be in line in terms of compliance with a specific provision or element related to cybersecurity. So just a couple of minutes ago, I mentioned we tried to be flexible when possible, but then there also are these sections and these elements of cybersecurity where we just cannot give that level of flexibility um, because of the requirements around um, the NEBI final rule or the way that the, the um, cybersecurity language and, and requirement is really structured. So this section also covers questions related to account configuration and permissions as well. Um, you'll also notice here that we're inquiring about the levels of multi-factor authentication or MFA and the controls used for the various project elements, including the NEVI equipment, the project data, and enterprise. In section three, we're reviewing configuration, vulnerability, and update management, or CVUM. 
Uh, here we dive into the authenticity and integrity of the system updates. Uh, we also want to understand violation reporting in this section as well. So how is that being uh, monitored and, and processed there? And then here's another instance of that um, flexibility I discussed earlier. Again, we want to make, make sure that we're mindful of the fact that awardees and project partners may need time to get the, a proper process in place. Um, so we are allowing for that here. Uh, prompting the awardees to outline how a process will be developed and uh, the timeline for developing that process as well. So trying to be flexible uh, uh, when we can. So section four of the template covers secure payment. Um, given the nature of the payment processing and sensitivity around data, this is a critical section um, as we were going through the development of this document in this particular section. We want awardees to identify and outline who the project team members and vendors are that will be part of payment card processing. Um, here's that red asterisk again. We need to make sure that the project is in alignment with payment card industry standards and that there's an attestation of compliance here. Um, and then you'll notice we're also requiring all payment card terminals to be um, EVM Co. Level 1 certified. So just some, some additional requirements and, and prompts there. So section five of the template covers secure communications. Uh, here we're diving into a discussion around encryption for both data in transit and at rest. Uh, we also wanna confirm the projects are limiting the collection of personal data. Uh, and again, here's another um, instance of that red asterisk, one of the requirements um, that's made very clear under that NEVI final rule, that 23 CFR 680 that I mentioned, is that data must be stored in the US. So here we're requiring certification of just that uh, by the awardee. Uh, one thing you may also notice in this template is that we're, uh, we've indicated character limits for the questions. So while we want to make sure that we're collecting a thorough response from all of the awardees, we also want to be mindful that the DOT reviewers who are reviewing, or you know, if they've contracted with someone to review these, um, and that they're approving the plans, that we offer an option um, at the beginning of the document for awardees to attach additional information that may be required, but we want to make sure that we're not, you know, going too crazy in, in the ability for an awardee to just put a ton of information in the document itself that's going to make it, you know, next to impossible for the reviewers to, to get through the, the document. So that brings us to our last section here, which is section six, where we're looking at the physical security at the site for each of the projects. Uh, we're looking for awardees to tell us um, if anti-tamper techniques are used at the site um, and on the equipment. And if so, we're asking awardees to describe that, that type of anti-tamper equipment. Um, here, we've also added a section for flexibility, as you can see. Uh, while we believe anti-tamper techniques are uh, critical, we wanna give awardees a chance to improve the techniques um, in coordination with their suppliers. So for pr protecting the physical safety at the site. Uh, so they can do that here and they can outline a plan for implementing um, additional me measures over the coming months to, to do that. So with that, I might add just uh, a few last minute points here before we dive into the Q&A. So um, as I mentioned, I think at the, at the top of the slide that I was sharing, the TEVI program is requiring the completion and approval of a cybersecurity plan prior to um, the go live uh, of the of the site or the station, and then again annually through the five year O and M period. Now that's uh, that's what the Tevi team has decided they're going to require. That might differ, you know, from from state to state as other states implement this template and you know change uh, change some elements to be state specific. Um, another point would be that Tdot and members of the Tevi team will be reviewing. Um, and approving awardee cybersecurity plans as they come in from awardees. So HNTB is in the process of developing a reviewer's guide that will assist in that review process. 
So that's something that HNTB has been working with uh, TDOT and uh, TDEC on to develop that reviewer's guide. Um, and ultimately the goal in developing this template and working hand in hand with the joint office and PNNL was to create a tool that could help support the protection of all of the parties involved related to cybersecurity of these NEVI projects. As, as we've been talking about, these are, you know, this is a novel program, this is a novel approach, and this technology is, is ever evolving. So we really wanted to put together something that could be utilized, you know, a, across the country and to support the other states as they're implementing these programs. So the Tevi team is happy that this resource will be able to be utilized as a template for other states as well. Um, and with that, I, I can open it up to q and I think we're hoping that folks can put um, questions into the chat and we can answer those. I may not be able to see them since I'm sharing my screen, but some of my colleagues here might be able to read some of those questions. And then the only other caveat that I'll share is um, from the HNTB and TDOT and TDEC perspective, we're happy to answer specific questions live about our template or our process. Um, however, we may not be able to um, and, and won't be able to address questions about why perhaps the joint office in PNNL decided to um, implement a particular um, provision or a cybersecurity clause. However, we do want to still collect those questions. So while we may not, might not be able to answer them, we'd love to still get feedback from, from the industry on those clauses so that we can then share that with the joint office and, and PNNL. And we, as, a, as the TEVI team, have committed to um, updating this template uh, annually to include updates that the joint office and PNNL might make to those clauses in those provisions so that we're making sure that we're on top of um, you know what what's happening in the industry and um, the changes to that technology. So I think I think I covered everything DG and Alexa, do you think that that covers everything from from our side? Happy to if so, I'm happy to open it up for our questions. I think you covered it all, Megan. Thank you. Thanks, Megan. No questions yet, but just a reminder to those on the line, if you do have any questions, please go ahead and type those into the Q&A box. It should be near the bottom of your screen on the Zoom control panel. We'll give folks a few minutes to type those out. Um, while we're waiting for any questions to come in, just a couple reminders. One is just to say you should have received a copy of the draft template in the invite for this webinar. But if you did not get that somehow and would like us to send it directly to you, just type your email directly into that box and we will send you a copy so that you have it to review and to provide feedback. Um, also, as far as next steps, once we wrap up today's webinar, you'll have two weeks. So by next Friday, November 1st, that's the deadline to submit any feedback on the cybersecurity plan template please do so via comments in the draft template doc itself. So again, if you need it, let us know. Happy to send it to you. Uh, HNTB and the state of Tennessee will then be reviewing that feedback. And later next month, we'll be sharing the final version with states. Uh, I see we have one question. Will this presentation be sent out? Great question. Um, I think we're happy to. Um, we will definitely be posting the recording. We are recording today's session for folks who weren't able to make it. And so we'll be sure to post that to NASIO's YouTube page, the recording of this session. But if you're interested in the slides, um, just shoot Megan or I an email and we can make sure you get a copy of those. Yeah, we can PDF those and, and send those out as, as requested. Wonderful. Thank you. I'll take the opportunity to, while we're waiting for more questions to come in, to just say a huge thank you to TDOT, TDEC, HNTB, the Joint Office, PNNL. I know a ton of work has gone into this template. And as I opened with, all this, these states that we've been working with are very interested in leveraging this. Um, this is exactly the sort of thing that we were hoping to get out of these working groups to support states without... Um, each one having to kind of reinvent the wheel. So just a thank you to everyone on this call, not just for your time today, but for all the work that's gone into this template. I'm really excited to see this be finalized. Absolutely.
I am not seeing any questions come in. So hopefully that means you did such a great job covering it. It's pretty clear. Yeah. Um, again, let us know if you need a copy of the template. Otherwise, we'll look for your feedback by November 1st. Thank you so much for joining today, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.